Hi there. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about math. Now I know, whoa, 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 relax. Don't worry. Uh, I was a math teacher uh, for people who weren't great at math. So I, I promise I'll make it as simple as I can. Won't uh, tax you in any way. It's just, it's important. And what I need to talk about is going to require a little bit of math for you to understand it. But it's mostly pictures. Don't, don't sweat it. Okay? What we're going to be talking about today is change. And specifically, uh, the degrees to which things can change. Some things change faster than others. Some changes are better than others. Okay? Now, the first kind of change that I want to talk about is really simple to understand. And it works something like this. Imagine that I sell exactly five copies of my new ebook per day. That ebook, of course, is Rereading the Bible, Agnostic Insights into Genesis, the Gospels, and Revelation, available now for only 99 cents. It's super cheap and you should read it. But let's say I sell exactly five of those a day, every single day, every week, every month, and it all goes in my PayPal account and I never touch that PayPal account. Now, you can visualize the change that's going to happen in my PayPal account. It's going to steadily get better and better and better and better and better. And if you were to make a picture or a graph out of that change, it would look something like this. Well, that was easy enough, right? And in fact, it stays easy. We call that kind of change a linear change. And there's a reason for that. Did you notice that the change was in a straight line? Linear. Linear growth. And linear growth is nice because it's very predictable and we all like it. And in fact, it's so easy and we like it so much that we kind of instinctively want everything to grow in a linear way. We kind of work things around in our head so that things will grow in a straight line. For example, you may have a habit, if you have kids, of going and buying them new clothes once a year, every year, probably just in time for school. Because in our heads, somehow, we've gotten the idea that our kids grow at a steady rate. But if you think about it for even a second, that's not true, is it? They go through growth spurts, and sometimes they change really fast in their height and their size. And sometimes they don't change much at all for a while. And it goes in fits and starts. Well, that's another way nature can work. But in our heads somehow, even when we're thinking about something as unpredictable as the weather or the stock market, we sort of have an idea that even if it spikes a little bit here and there, that actually it'll go in what amounts to a straight line. Well, that can be dangerous. Because, in fact, nature doesn't usually change in a straight line. Usually, nature changes using something called exponential growth. Now, yeah, exponential growth. That's a fancy word. Okay, it's a math word, and it has a math word in it, which is the word exponent. Now, you don't need to worry too much about that. You might be uh, more familiar with powers of numbers, like, for instance, if I said 4 squared is 16. Well, that little 2, that power, is an exponent, okay? And what it means is, as you put information into our system, when it changes, the value of the number you put in is being multiplied by itself, maybe once, maybe more. And that means that numbers can climb really fast, but it's tricky. Now, an exponential graph, if something grows along an exponential path, looks a little something like this. Hmm, that's different. Did you notice that as the curve started off, it actually seemed to move in kind of a linear way, and then all of a sudden that curve bent really sharply and it just took off. Well, that bend, which mathematicians call the elbow of the curve, really snazzy technical language like that, makes all the difference. 
Because once you pass that elbow, things can change very rapidly indeed. And numbers that come out of that system can climb like a skyrocket. There's an old story, and I've heard various versions of it, and probably none of them are true. But it goes a little something like this. Um, a Raja in India was given the gift of a beautiful chessboard. And uh, the, the chessboard was made by a skilled but very poor peasant. And the Raja asked the peasant what he would like in return for this beautiful gift. And the peasant said, well, I tell you what, how about we work it like this? Give me one grain of rice for the first square of the chessboard, and then two grains of rice for the second, and then four for the third, and eight for the fourth, and you see how this is working. Every time we're multiplying the number of grains of rice by two. And just go that way until you've filled all 64 squares of the chessboard. And the Raja thought, well, this guy's a pretty good craftsman, but he's not the sharpest fork in the drawer, is he? But when you try and actually fulfill that, what you find is that when you're about two-thirds of the way through the chessboard, you're already at a million grains of rice on a square. And by the time you're done, there's not enough rice in the entire world to fill that square. That's how big numbers can get, okay? Well, what kinds of things in nature adhere to an exponential growth path? Well, population does. You can start very small. Let's say you have bacteria growing in a petri dish. Well, they're going to reproduce, okay? They're going to double every few minutes or hours or whatever it is, and they're going to double and double and double and double, just like those grains of rice on the chessboard. And pretty soon, they're going to slop out of the petri dish doesn't take that long. If you've ever had a rat problem in your house, you know what exponential growth looks like. They double and double and double and double. We live on a planet that is currently suffering from overpopulation of a certain species, uh, namely ours, Homo sapiens. We have fulfilled the injunction we were given to subdue the earth, and in fact we have surpassed that. We have really overfilled our niche in the ecology and that's causing some problems. It's causing problems for us too because we're running out of food for all of us and that's tricky.